Hello everyone. Hope everyone's doing well today. Here I have um, my old captain chair that um, that is a uh, pretty worn and ugly and outdated. And um, here I have a newer model Ford E250 or E350 um driver's seat that i um found on facebook marketplace and um they aren't swivel they didn't come off of a swivel type um base but um on my rv here that i'm currently remodeling um they're usually equipped with swivel chairs so um i'd like to preserve that and so um, I've made a custom seat bracket to make this non-swivel chair fit on the swivel base, as you can see here. Um, I ran into a few little issues, but um, nothing a um, cutting wheel could handle. Um, and just uh, four bolts, nuts, and washers per chair. So um, I did this one already, and I still have to swap in this one. So I'm gonna show you how I did that. And um, yeah, I'm really excited to share this with you guys because um, this is a well-needed upgrade. I'm gonna shampoo them and everything after I'm done working on them. Um, I recently just installed this carpet as well. So if you guys are interested in replacing the carpet in your um, cab, uh, I also have a video on how to do that. But um, yeah, let's get right to it. All right, so to start with, you're gonna wanna remove the seat. There's gonna be um, four nuts holding it here. At least in my case, I have four nuts. And um, as you can see here, it's a pretty narrow base here compared to my new seats. I'm gonna put them side by side for you. So. My new seats, I took a measurement earlier. I think it's about 13 or 14 inches across. And um, these holes are about eight inches across. So um, yeah, there's a, it's a big, big difference there. See, I can almost touch that and it's almost double. So yeah, so that's where we're gonna start. So you first off, you're gonna start with getting a uh, 10 foot, 10 foot, let's call this a 10 foot bracket bar. I don't know the exact name for it, but I'm sure you could easily find this at your nearest um, Home Depot or Lowe's or wherever it is that you shop at. And um, they come, they come in 10 feet. Um, poles so I got one of these and it worked for this I have enough and a little more um, just to handle this project and um, so you're gonna cut these um, the length of your new seat here you know just so that you have a hole lining up on each one so that because that's where we're going to secure it and initially i thought you know it was just going to be two brackets boom, boom, and good to go but um the this uh slider here needs to move all the way up here to unlock these um well to lift these teeth to allow the seat to move back and forth unlike my 
older one, my older seat, which was this weird, outdated um, mechanism. So I appreciate this one better because this one was just a pain just to even find it. You know, anyone jumps in there and they're just struggling to move their seat forward. And um, this as well to just move the, it locks into place or I don't know. It's um, older than me. So I was born in 98, this is a 93. So I'm more used to something like this. So, so yeah, so you're going to cut this, you're going to cut two, two for one seat, if you cut four in total, and then this one here, I had to do it like, wait, no, this isn't the right one, let me get you the right one here, I had to do it like this. Was it the right one? I think it was the right one. So I initially I cut it like this. And that didn't work because it needs to go up. And as you can see here, it doesn't. So I had to, I had to cut it this way. this here like so and I would depress it until it clears I mean I can't do this with one hand but you're pretty much gonna bolt this on and it's gonna push this forward but um, this has a lot of play so you can push this all the way almost flush and the teeth are still showing so your seat's not gonna go anywhere so that worked well for me so i put this like so like that boom and then you use these same nuts here to secure that let me show you on the one i already did so you have a better look so here you go, like so. And so then you just secure that there and then you just run a bolt with a washer up top and a nut and you just secure that there on the, um, on your base. So it was, um, it was a pretty simple, um, you know simple little simple bracket here I did it with the cutting wheel I just cut these all to down to size and then I took a marker and I just marked out pretty much where I wanted to cut here and these are pretty solid you know I mean I did take a big chunk out of it but the integrity is is still there so um, as you see here I cut into the holes here I wouldn't recommend doing that because when you put the bolt and washer here, it may slip out. So I'm probably going to recut this one and I would probably just cut it in between here. Like so. So let me show you this one. hope I didn't lose you guys but what I was saying about the, the holes is you try to cut in between the holes so that way when you put your bolt and your washer you know you're not risking it slipping through even though with a decent sized washer it probably won't you know but better safe than sorry 
but um, yeah, it's working pretty great. I'm pretty satisfied with it. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. That's wifey. Um, so if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, you guys let me know. And um, please join in on the RV restoration. I'm going to be posting a lot more now since um, I've been uh, building up the courage to speak to you guys and just share this project with you guys. So, yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace. Bye. That's that Florida weather for you guys. But we got these installed just before the rain came down on us. So really happy. Came out great. Look at that. Pow.